meeting is called to order and the recording begins. Uh, this is the Brooklyn CB2 Youth Education and Cultural Affairs uh, Committee. Uh, we conduct remote meetings with the committee members' cameras on. Um, so we encourage uh, people to do that. And of course, keep your microphones muted. And I think uh, everyone here pretty much knows the our protocols. So the first thing we will do is uh, conduct a roll call or we call it introductions. So um, I'm Betty Freibush, I'm the chair of the committee and uh, uh, Dorothea will introduce herself. Hi, I'm Dorothea Thompson Manning and I'm the uh, co-chair of the committee. Welcome and Nick. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Nick Pereira, committee and uh, board member. Welcome. And he's checking the minutes tonight, and we'll be asking for volunteer secretaries, but With that's later. <laughs> what? With a smile. With a smile. <laughs> Santia. Hello, my name is Santia Policia. I'm a committee member and board member. Great. Um, have we seen Sam yet? No. Um, Okay, so I want to introduce uh, Madison. Uh, she's our newest member. So welcome. Oh, I see Sam. Uh, so we'll, we'll get back to you, Sam. I'm in the middle of introducing Madison, who will introduce herself. Tell us, um, you, you look like a young person. So are you our, one of our youth members? Do you go to high school or college? Tell us a little bit. And we're delighted that you're joining our committee. Um, yeah, hi, so I'm Madison. Uh, I'm a senior in high school. Um, yeah, I'm excited to meet everyone and contribute. Yeah. Which high school am I in? Um, Stuyvesant High School. It's in Manhattan, but I live in Brooklyn. Great. No, I, I think that uh, your voice will be important uh, on all matters, but especially when we discuss issues in schools, because um, People who are experienced at uh, school are experts in it. And looking at us, you will see we experienced school a ways ago. Uh, so your current experience will be very delight, uh, very important and welcome. And we're delighted. And now we have Sam Johnson somewhere. Welcome, Sam. Madison. Hi, welcome, Madison. I just came in on a great time. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sam Johnson. I am a community board member as well as a committee member. Great. So we again, we hope people had a good summer and are ready to um, to work here. Uh, the approval of the agenda is. Uh, does everyone agree with the agenda as written? Are there any changes? No. Okay. Now the approval of the minutes, which. Um, Nick took last June. Last June seems like years ago, but <laughs> I had to read them again to familiarize myself. Uh, I recommend one change, which is a typo, I think. Um, it, it mentioned PS 138 on um, Pacific Street, but it should be PS 38. So, but excellent minutes. Uh, so. Can, uh, are there other uh, comments on the minutes or can we approve them by consensus? Okay, hearing no comments, we can note that they're approved by consensus. Uh, so the two big items that we have to talk about tonight are um, youth outreach, being that we are the Youth Education and Cultural Affairs, and we always want to hear young people's voices. And some years we've had one youth member, some years we haven't had any. And we really, we've discussed this and we'd really like a more robust uh, youth voice that, that, has, that has meaning for the participants and the adults. Because uh, I believe and we believe that young people need to do authentic work, not just um, reading about civic affairs, but participating in the adult world as, as people who are experiencing um, living in the city today. So um, with that, I wanna mention that I spoke to Taya 
this summer and we were talking about youth outreach and Taya has some ideas she'd like to share and then we'll discuss. This isn't a fait accompli, this is a working work in progress. Thank you so much Taya for the work you've done on this. Um, it is my pleasure and it has been exciting to work on this with you, Adi. Let me just pop this open really quick. Um, so the last thing you said is the most important. This is not written in stone. I've just gotten a head start on uh, preparing some materials that we might need to, to conduct the actual recruitment and outreach. Uh, so let's talk about a youth council. Let's talk about launching it in 2022. Um, this is aimed mostly at the audience of administrators, uh, social studies and civics teachers and professors. Um, I think that the, the most compelling bit that I pulled out from the New York State Board of Regents uh, statement on civic education is this idea of teaching students to respectfully and productively disagree with other viewpoints and how much that could carry over into so many aspects of just regular old life. Um, this is familiar to you all, just a 101 about what community boards are with the emphasis on them being the most local form of representative government in New York. So the next three slides are the portions that could really use the most committee input um, if this committee should choose to make a motion to pass this forward to the general board for adoption by the full board. So board members, public members, youth council. Let's start from the top and work down. Um, all three categories have a requirement to be a New York City resident. You must live, work, or have other significant interest in Brooklyn Community District too. Um, there are two seats currently reserved in our bylaws. Of the 50 board members, two seats are reserved for board members that are ages 16 plus. As far as I know, Ms. Feibush, and we'll have to confirm this, I do not believe there is a cap on how many 16 plus members you may have on a committee. So I do not believe that restriction carries through for public members or youth council. So right now you'll see there's no restriction, no maximum number of seats listed. Um, the appointment process for members, public members and youth council is slightly different. So the the for the application process, that is entirely handled by the Brooklyn Borough President's Office for full board members. The committee really manages the application process for public members. According to our bylaws, the application process for becoming a public board member is to attend three consecutive committee meetings in a row. Uh, by, and then you can be nominated by the committee chair to the board chair who confirms it. The application process for youth council members would actually be handled administratively by the CD2 office because it would be an open application for all eligible students. The confirmation portion of the appointment, again, it's BBPO for board members, board chair confirms public members, and YECA would confirm the youth council members. The committee assignments are the purview of the board chair for both board members and public members and it would by default be youth council members would all be assigned to the YECA committee. Um, in terms of duties for board members and public members, you serve two year terms for up to four terms. And then uh, per the recent term limits that were voted in by New York City, um, you have to take a year off before you can re-up again. The term suggested for the youth council is six months, and I'll go into that in the timeline slide, which is next. The required attendance duty for board members is both the general board meeting and any assigned committee meetings. For public members, they are required to attend committee meetings. They are able optionally to attend the general board meeting. Um, for youth council members, we would suggest that they are required to attend only the YECA committee meetings. And then for voting, of course, that's the biggest difference um, and something that is open for discussion here. So right now, uh, according to the bylaws, the board members vote on board items and their assigned committee items. Public members vote only on committee items and cannot vote on board items. And then you all, it's up to you to decide, would you like the youth council members to vote on YECA items or are they advisory only? 
So that's a graph that we can come back to to get into it in more detail. Uh, oh, when will we have, when can we, should we ask questions at each slide that at, we have questions or at the end? What do you prefer? Um, let's do it at the end when I'll open up the slides and I can actually do the edits live. I think we're gonna spend the most time on these three slides, this one and the following two. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is just an overview of what is the, the Youth Council. It's open to ages 16 plus. You must attend a school within Brooklyn CD2. It is a six month, 20, approximate 20 hour commitment. And we calculated that as 12 hours of committee meetings over six months, plus maybe eight hours of an independent capstone presentation preparation. Uh, required attendance at six monthly committee meetings from January through June, which aligns with the typical spring semester. Meeting times from six to eight. Chair Fibush is very good about getting us out of here at a reasonable hour. Sure. Um, and the part that we're excited about is inviting students to have an opportunity to advocate for one after attending five meetings, their capstone project would be at the June meeting. Uh, where they have an opportunity to advocate for one request to be included in the committee's submissions to the Statement of District Needs in October. And that capstone presentation could be done individually if one of the students has a particular interest in one something, or it could be done as a group if a group of students decide to coalesce on something. Uh, this could very easily be structured for school credit if the school writes the guidelines and provides permissions. Um, I don't, I had not suggested that the committee would be responsible for uh, creating guidelines to follow, but rather that I'm suggesting that we follow guidelines that are, that already exist. Uh, the, a bullet that is not in here because it's public facing, but internally, another note is that uh, I was reminded this morning at the Myrtle bid quarterly meeting, actually, that there, uh, each of the bids in our district there are technically nine, but three of them are clustered. So there are seven working bids. Um, each of the bids actually has a fund available to pay interns through placements. So it is possible that I would suggest that this program be iterative for a few years, um, experimental this year, improved next year, and hopefully um, the, the goal would be to have a representative seat from every high school or college in our district, of which there are 20, I'm sorry, high schools and colleges only, I believe there are 13. Uh, I did not include middle schools because that would bump up against the 16 plus requirement. Uh, and perhaps in the future, these could be paid internships. Okay, timeline. So let me move this so I can see. So I would suggest an application period of October 4th to November 15th. This is conveniently after the general board vote, if you should decide to propose that it be adopted by the full board, and before the application period would close before your November meeting. So the office can organize all the applications and you can review them in November. Um, acceptance letters issued by December 15th, well before holiday breaks. And then the youth council members would start in January, they would attend five meetings, January, February, March, April, May. Um, and along the way, we would be reminding them to uh, be preparing to give a five minute individual or group capstone presentation in June uh, with their youth developed recommendation for a request for our statement of district needs. Um, and then I think the rest of it is, yeah, that's also needs to be formatted. Um, so that's it. Well, I thank you for this. This is a very uh, ambitious and, and thoughtful approach that you've offered um, for our discussion. Before, I'm gonna ask the board members to, um, of course, ask their questions. But my first question would be, you've made more work for yourself or for the board office today. You, you'd be collecting some material, sending, advising, sending letters, answering questions. So I'm wondering, since the board office um, is down, uh, some one and a half people, shall I say? Uh, Two people. Honestly, there there are no half humans. <laughs> Can, can, you know, how do you feel about 
handling the additional um, demands of this project. I am, I, we don't want to burden you further. Yes, I am grateful for your concern and your acknowledgement that we are half the staff that we were a month ago um, or six months ago. So this is not my first rodeo setting up this sort of program. Um, and honestly, the, the majority, the, the heavy lifting really happens the first year um, and only for a few months. And I trust that the finance and personnel committee of this board and the executive committee of this board will not allow our current state of understaffing to continue infinitely. <laughs> so I am, I am not concerned about the additional uh, work. There will be some additional administration um, but like I said, I, I, I actually do have some templates and, and such to pull from. Great. Um, I would love to open this up to the committee's uh, conversation, but I can't see the faces because I see that the board membership. So can we change the screen so I can see people's faces so I know who to call? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, um, and then we can um, slide back to that, of course. So first I wanna know, who has questions about this? This is a, a much deeper approach than that that we've uh, taken in the past. So, um, questions? I'm one, I'm, you know, I'm one more for like. Well, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know, I'm one more for comments. Um, I think it's awesome. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe it's my this iPad, let's see. I don't know, okay, I, I, I'll just try to listen. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's great, I'm excited. I, I think it will be a very exciting opportunity for a lot of youth to, you know, to really experience the inner workings you know, of something that might feel pretty exclusive or something maybe that uh, they don't even feel maybe that they belong to doing a lot of, um, you know, research on like community belonging and mobility out of poverty and things like that. And sense of belonging and valued uh, is a big part of that, right? So super amazing experience. Um, I'm wondering a few things that I would throw out to everybody here. If, you know, what you think about possible tweaks to it structurally. Um, and I just had like two related ideas from the perspective of youth um and their interest and i think when we think of engagement in this we you know the more interested they are the higher engagement we'll see so while i appreciate there is a why in our committee and it stands for youth uh, i am wondering about maybe two options one that they have to come to the proposed yaka ones but that they have to go to one other just one in the course of those five months, another committee of choosing to see an area that they may be excited about. You know, I'm sure there are many of them excited about transportation. It might be a passionate issue like climate change or just something and we're not talking about it. Um, and so maybe they're not hearing some things they wish they were, or maybe it's that, that we have one youth applying for each committee and that they're coming together, you know, at a point like there's a, that we expect them to come together periodically over the course of that time and then still doing the capstone together. But they would have gotten the whole big picture instead of maybe a more limited um, ink lens. I, I appreciate that. That was one of my thoughts that their passion could be about uh, transportation, safety, those are some of the things I think about, maybe parks and recreation, et cetera. So they might not be as concerned about youth concerns. So yeah, I think we should build that in some way into the structure. I we'll appreciate that. Uh, Dorothy, did you have anything? Um, I'm still thinking about it. I do wanna know um, how you came up with the, the, the name with the word council in it. I actually borrowed that from, I think it's, uh, what is Sean's community district? There, there are other, there are at least two other uh, Brooklyn community boards, and I think a half dozen community boards in the city 
that have youth councils already. Um, and it's, it's to separate them, I would imagine to separate them legally from the idea of them being a board member. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, that's, that's all I have right now. And I'm, I'm thinking about other things. Anyone else? Santia? No, I don't have any questions at this time. <laughs> okay. Sam. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I do want, um, I do agree as far as having them engage in other committees so that they can kind of get their feet wet. And if they decide in the next term um, that they will be, you know, interested in another committee, they can still do that as well. Um, yeah, I think I, I'm just processing and I just want to make sure that we give the uh, individuals who are there as much openness and space to be able to really find their independence within the the committees and create, you know, what they really want out of this and then develop that. I do, I do want to say as far as like being a public or a voting member, I feel like and maybe I'm just kind of just overly excited. I feel like we should give them the power that's necessary for them to make the decisions that are efficient. Um, and with that being said, they can make stronger arguments when they feel like they have that particular type of power if there is something that's really heavy on their heart. So that's my only my only thing that I'm considering. Other than that, I think it's a really great idea. Thank you, Tia. I love all this feedback. Um, the new question I have is related to the voting. So I love the idea of having of allowing the youth council members to be able to choose their own committee topic of interest that complicates the question of voting. And I wonder if at least for the first year, because, because it, it complicates the voting question because it, it means that the quorum on committees would be variable for the six of 10 meetings per year that the youth council is active that may unnecessarily complicate things. So I wonder what would you, what does the committee think of proposing to the board that they are not voting members, but are advisory only at least for the first year. Um, it, it just, it really comes down to a boring math question. It's just the, the each committee meets 10 times per year, right? Once a month, uh, September through June. So if the youth council is only active during the spring semester, uh, it means that the quorum of the committees would be variable. And that also might impose on the, the board chair actually is the person that very carefully balances the, the membership of the committees. So allowing, allowing the youth council to vote across many committees might be too big of a chunk for this first year. That's my suggestion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, we've always been that we all chose to be on this committee and are interested in the young people in our district. I, 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 I can say uh, without doubt that we would be able to put a little more effort into nurturing the young people, answering questions, supporting them, and so on. But some of the other chairs might not have the same viewpoint. So we wouldn't want to make too many demands on the other chairs, I think. Um, another new question is, again, I just, loving- yeah, I, just, I just wanted to add, I'm wondering if we open it up to them at a meeting to even give feedback on whether yeah. they would be open to it, even if it's the future, right? Even if we're saying, you know, because this all changes any pilot, what it looks like in the beginning, you know, should look different, I would think, uh, later. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, because they, they may be excited about it and ultimately it sounds like we're asking for their vote. So um, maybe as much input as they have, the more likelihood they're on board. So are you saying that we should recommend that the young people have a vote on that committee or are you saying not? I, I, no, I'm sorry. I, what, I, what I meant was if, you know, so about the voting, I think if, 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 a, if the young people are assigned to us, our quorum changes is what you're saying, right? Like, so if we had five kids, you know, joining off, five youth joining us and they're participating members, our quorum 
our group went up by five, our quorum changes. Right. So I think that if there is a proposal, my original proposal of them sort of popping in and out of one a month does create this variable. <laughs> so that might not be the best, but if up front it was just one is assigned to one and everybody got one and that's what the general board was comfortable with. That's what I meant, asking the general board to weigh in on, would you be open to having one youth member who sits on a larger youth council across CB2? Or is that something you just don't wanna be a part of? Because fair enough, you love parks, you might not love kids. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, I mean, yeah, too. and would the kids <laughs> wanna be opining about liquor licenses? You know that that's what one of our dear I, yes. <laughs> do. So. And let me tell you what I think about what you just said, Nick. I think you'd be putting the board in a position they don't want to be put in. Because if they don't really would prefer not to have young people on their committees, they, they, they may not want to say it because, you know, people make opinions about what other people think and feel. So um, I'm just saying, I think we'd be putting them on the hot, hot seat. And I don't think that's the way to go because only a few will voice their opinions and everybody else will, will want to say maybe the same thing but they might be a little hesitant because they don't want to be called you know whatever they're going to be called so um i just think that is not necessarily the best way to do it we know that we would like them but we don't know about everybody else I think that is a very true and honest, a fair assessment of the temperament of the board at large. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. So then. So then I just want to elevate then Sam's point that I think it is incumbent upon us to make sure that as I wrote it in the minutes, I, I heard her say, you know, giving them the openness and independence like to develop themselves, right? Because again, just because we have youth in our name doesn't make it that the youth are getting something out of this. So that is our charge now to go with this. We gotta, you know, be tailoring the experience, I think, to some individual interests so they get maximum. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I do thank you, Tortia, for acknowledging that, that, you know, we have a different lens on how we wanna approach this. <laughs> and definitely I know that everyone else doesn't necessarily feel the same sentiment, but I do think that if we're gonna do a test run it's just that it's a trial run and then we can see engage how this actually works out for a, a lot of the members um, who even as we progress there's going to be new changes and some of us may not be in the same seat so there might be different perspectives and ideas after this trial run but I do I'm still very confident in, in the growing stages of it and I do think that if there are young people who are in other committees, they can also sense, and they are a voting power, right? They can also be that voice for those who are unable to be um, able to vote in the first trial run of this. So I think that we can also inspire other committees to kind of engage other young people if that is such their need. Um, and then being able to use those voices who are non-voting members to kind of amplify what the issues are. So that might be also an option as well. Hmm. Maybe it would be, I wonder, um, Taya, can you tell us what other districts experiences? Because you did some research and you found out that other districts have youth council. So what are they, the takeaways? What worked? What didn't work? Did they vote? Were they in the quorum? Were they on different committees? Whatever um, you can. Yeah, un unfortunately, uh, I, I don't think any community board produces an annual report, although I believe that is in the city charter, which is fascinating. Um, so I can only share what I observed externally. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like they're all handling them differently, although I will note that all of the ones that I noticed, the youth are only on their, their committee involved with youth. So us inviting them to be on other committees would be unique. Um, they do not vote on any on any in any district that I am aware of. Yeah. So um, there's no that? vote there. Oh, participating I, the, and they're maybe recommending. The, the emphasis could that again we could borrow from others. Um, I think the emphasis could be stronger about really make this is a pipeline. So we are allowed to fill two seats mm -hmm. of our 50 seats with youth. And uh, until Madison appeared this month, this is actually the first time in my experience here that we've had two seats filled. So we exactly. maybe we need to emphasize that this is 
a strong pipeline mm -hmm. to fill the keep those seats filled because once they make their capstone presentation to us in June, and we we sh this committee should know these youth pretty well by then after six months of meetings, um, and that might be a really convenient springboard to nominate some of them to become public members or full board members because that process opens up in January. Usually the applications open in January. Yeah, but I'm wondering if they have to be 16 plus or they have to be in high school now. So this is their year and then they could apply, but some of them are going to go off to college out of State. Right. It, it wouldn't be required. Let's let's say let's imagine that in our first year we get six participants. Um, Sixteen years old is what a junior. At, at the start at the start of the school year, it junior. could be a sophomore. Sure. So right. of those six, let's pretend that four of them are not in their senior year. So those four, once they complete the spring semester with us, they would still be in the district and still eligible for either public membership with this committee or potentially full board membership. Mm -hmm. okay. So they would not be taking up the seats from the 50 that's, uh, so this would be no. entirely different. Right, okay. because th this committee ca does not have the authority to fill those seats. The, the, the 50 board member seats are appointed directly by the borough president. Okay. That's, that's another reason why it's the youth council. Okay. To separate, to keep that separate. Okay, so I was wondering, so the, the, the youth council that participates with our committee, but maybe as part of structuring the committee, I mean, the, the, the work, we say that they have to attend one full meeting, uh, one you know general meeting, as well as one other committee. So that maybe like somebody who just is really into biking or something goes to transportation. And then that's an idea that they work on for their project, but they would attend our meetings. Does that make any sense? It does, because I'm worried about the capstone statement of district needs. Where do they get the exposure to anything beyond our wants and needs if they're only in our meetings? Like they would have to read the document, I guess, to even conceptualize what kind they of thing. Could, they would go to the other committee that they're interested in, and then maybe I mean, if it's on Zoom, it's easy for them to go, but um, then maybe they could read the minutes of that committee. Or uh, The other thing is some students might want to come with their, um, their advisor from their high school. Like sometimes advisors want to get students involved and will say, well, I'll go with you to a few meetings or, you know, so, some young people that might need more support who aren't quite as independent. So then you'd have that person as well, which could be, you know, they're supporting the young person, but they're another person in the mix. Okay, so I've added two more bullets. Does this reflect the committee's wishes? Is every general board meeting? Or one. No, I'm a little unsure about the two committee meetings of their choice. I thought we were talking about at least one general board meeting and a possibility of attending one other committee yeah. if they so choose. But I don't think that's how it was written. Oh, okay, yeah. she's changing it. Yeah, 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 I think that's what I heard. That's, that's well. Um... You guys are going easy on them. <laughs> We are. Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm teasing. No, I think that was a good point of Dorothy because we can't make this so demanding that these young people drop out. We and yeah, they I, will. They one, will because they may not want to attend uh, different meetings. But if if any yeah. of them do want this to be structured for school credit, we will. Pro I, my guess is that pro my knowledge of schools typically have a, a much higher 
hourly, mm -hmm. like weekly hourly requirements. So they may need to attend more board me more meetings mm -hmm. to fulfill. Well, that would, that would only practice. that would only take place if uh, you spoke to someone in the school and they say it's okay for school credit. Then That's we would right. have to uh, adjust. But since we haven't gotten to that point, um, I don't know if it really if we need to worry about that at this particular moment. Should okay, we say does... one or more of, because some students might embrace it and want to do one or more, you know, that would be up to them. Yeah. Well, now you're taking them away from the um, our committee. So you're going to have to make a decision. What is it you really want them to, what, what is it you would really like them to do? Um, have a lot of options less options, um, thinking of something that may interest them. So I think we need to just think about how it was structured originally, what it is we'd like them to do, and not try to stretch it larger and bigger than we really have to, because it is a test. And you can always increase, but no one likes to have anything taken away from them. They always like to have something given to them. So that's how mm -hmm. I'm thinking. I don't disagree, Dorothy. I don't, I don't think it's, we don't wanna make it too burdensome. I, I did hear the goal being the civic engagement piece, right? Um, <coughs> getting involved. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 I don't know that it's about adding it on so much as just making sure that we give them a true experience that like a lens and just worry that this committee, if it's only this and that's it, 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 it. The capstone kind of concerns me in some ways of like, how do we make that leap to mm -hmm. the district needs when, I don't know, we, we're not often, we, we, I feel like we deal with a lot less needs sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. we you know, our needs sometimes are connecting amazing cultural institutions to schools. Um, versus, you know, accessible subway entrances, you know, that have never been accessible for decades, you know, in a community. Um, and Let's ask Madison, I know you're new to this and this is the first time, but I'm gonna We ask stink, you. sorry, Madison. <laughs> um, like being, being that you're, in a demanding high school, you have a lot of work to do. What do you think we're making too much demand for young people to attend this amount of meetings? What do you think? Um, I definitely don't. Um, I feel like, like as being on the youth committee and then just the general, it's usually just two meetings a month, which I don't think is very um, demanding. And especially like if it's only one or more um, general board meetings and one or more um, committee meetings. I think that's definitely doable. Um, I was gonna say, I don't really know too much about like the capstone presentations, but pot potentially like a workshop or like um, helping them like form it um, when the time comes might be helpful. You're actually gonna get a taste of that on our next agenda item. <laughs> Yeah, and we're going to be struggling through it. So you'll see adults <laughs> struggling through this process. Thanks, okay, Madison. So just to review the three critical, the, the three slides that I think are critical to, you know, you deciding whether you want to propose this to the full board and the board potentially voting on it is the rules of membership. So the only change I've made here, the the, the big points on this slide are that youth council members also must be 16 plus. The application process would be handled by the CD2 office. The administration of the youth council would be handled by Yucca. It's a six month term, not a two year term. <clears throat> um, I've changed this to multiple committees instead of just Yucca and they are not voting members because they are six month temporary. The, any comments on this slide? Any additional edits? So can we go 15? I'm a November birthday. I believe I turned 17 in my senior year of high school at, in November. 
So I would have no ability to do any connection. I mean, I could be a public member, but I, so yeah, I, I, would you guys be open to 15 to, to capture? That's that's actually, under? unfortunately not up that's, to us. That's that's actually mm -hmm. in the New York City Charter. That's not even oh. in the, that's there, right. That's, for a that's, council, for a council? Yes. Oh. Um, and for what it's worth, it's not just high school, it's also colleges and universities. So, so there could be folks on our youth council that are, okay, so let's, let's look at the second slide, unless any other comments on this. this. There could be folks on the youth council that are undergrad or graduate age. It's just the minimum age is 16, right? Okay, so any, any additional changes to really this right rightmost column? I think it's, it's fine. I think uh, if we decide to bring this to the full board for a, a discussion and a vote, I wonder how the other like committee chairs especially will feel like we're giving them another responsibility um are we though they, they actually all they have to do is be nice to a young person who's yeah. showing up in their meeting and actually there have been three committees this past year that have had uh, uh multiple girl scouts show up to advocate for statues and all kinds of things so they're, they're used to it <laughs> okay they, they actually don't have any administrative there we're not asking other committees to take on any administrative responsibilities at all just to welcome them as, as they would any member of the community that comes to our public meetings. Sounds good. Good point. They don't really get to choose. They have to welcome everyone from the public. <laughs> okay, okay. Any, any additional edits to this? The main changes to this is I took out the hourly estimate because it sounds like that's a little fuzzy and I just amended this. So just to be clear, the requirements are that they attend six monthly yucca committee meetings, at least one or more monthly general board meeting, and at least one or more co other committee meeting of their choice. Mm -hmm. Maybe put other committee because maybe that would be clearer. I mess up my formatting, but yes. Any other edits to this slide? That's great. Okay, I'll futzed with the, oh, there we go. Get rid of that, um, maybe. Maybe get rid of it there and fix it. Oh, you got it, right? You did it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a master of this. Okay, and then the timeline, I don't think there were any issues with this. So basically, there's some <clears throat> admin. Uh, we'd open the application from October 4th to November 15th. That's exactly six weeks to get the, well, actually, we'd have time before October 4th, but there's six weeks to advertise the applications and get as many as we can. Uh, the committee would have one meeting to deliberate the applications, uh, review the applications and make decisions about them. And actually you would probably wanna do that in an executive session of the committee, which would not be recorded because you would be discussing personal matters. Um, and then the acceptance letters would be issued before the winter holidays. They come to meetings for, January through May, and then they can present in June. And with the understanding that, uh, right, that's all. Any changes to the timeline? I tried my best to really line it up with, you know, a spring academic calendar to make it convenient mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Then I guess. Um, but so it's we should fun to on, so thank you. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't advise you on that, but if you would like to, please do. Okay, uh, Nick seems to have disappeared from this, his square. Oh, he's back, okay. So is there a motion that we bring this to the full board? Their emotion.
for the adoption yes, I, by the full bring, I do. I bring a motion for an adoption by the full Wait, you're, you're bringing the motion, Nick? I, I, I am. I, I am. Okay, and I'll, I'll second it. I, I think it's fun. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's um, call for a vote. Um, I guess we don't have to do a roll call, so we'll just um, vote um, uh, to raise your hand in, in, if you support, if you're voting yes for this, that we bring this to the full board. Do we have quorum? Yes. yes. Okay. So myself, Santia, uh, Sam raised her hand digitally. I love it. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Madison. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Is that a vote of five to, and, and one? Uh, are you abstaining or voting no? Dorothy? Who, who, I voted. I had my hand up. Oh. Oh, I didn't see that. So it's everybody voted yes. Perfect. What about uh, uh what is her name? Aja, Aja. Did she vote? I see her. Is she a member of the committee? She's I don't a, think so. A special guest member of the public, not a member of the committee. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm not a member, but hello everyone. Hi. Okay. Hello. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, maybe you'll be a future member if this work intrigues you. Okay, so that's very good. So we will bring this to the uh, full board. Great, very yes. exciting. It will be on the agenda for next Wednesday's board meeting. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and uh, next on the agenda is this kind of <laughs> a little more challenging <laughs> discussion of, of the statement of district needs. And I, I've looked, we had a preliminary discussion in in June, and we kind of talked about some of the issues. And in in doing more reading and also discussing this uh, with Taya, who's very insightful, she really urged that we be very specific. That one of the problems in the past was we had general um, recommendations on that report, and they have to be things that we have data on something that where there is a problem and it will be solving a problem and where we could try to quantify a budgetary ask. Like I know that in the past, we all love to say that the library should be open, you know, more hours and weekends and, and so on, but that's not a budget. I, I mean, it is budget, it is budgetary, but it's, it's not like saying that this specific corner needs a traffic light or you know something very specific and quantifiable. That's that's my understanding. So I took a stab at some of this. I don't know if you can pull that up, Taya. Like some of the things that we that I tried to to write, but again, I don't I don't know that we have enough data or budgetary uh, information. So I'd like to uh, mention that in June, to refresh our memory, we talked about the, the Farragut housing and the, whether it's a community center or senior or use it, it's a, it's a building that originally a room or a set of rooms that were developed to, to serve community needs. And we've heard it's in disrepair. We probably need a a tour or to speak to a programmatic person there, someone who works there. So I don't know how we would go about that. Um, we talked about broadband, that students absolutely need broadband uh, access these days. And again, that's a citywide initiative. We're not saying we need it in a specific development or how much it would cost. So again, I don't know how that would fit in. Um, this year, we talked about asthma and the open airways program. And I thought maybe that could be quantifiable that every school in our district have a nurse that's trained in the open airway program. 
that's quantifiable. There are X number of schools, elementary schools, each one needs a nurse and each one needs a nurse that's trained in this program. But before I go on, I had put some other things in Taya on that other, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was playing around with that. Okay. I apologize. I didn't I didn't catch these. I only caught the first two. Let me um, move these over while you're talking. Oh, I mean, I, I was just experimenting with them. I, I for discussion because I felt we needed something to work from. So I mean, I think maybe the nurse thing could be a possibility, but then we would need to know which schools don't have a nurse, a school nurse, um, in order to make that request. The superintendent had mentioned that some schools don't have enough uh, devices for the students who are currently physically in the building because they were giving them out so quickly at the beginning of the shutdown and families have moved or lost them or they've broken. And in order to do some of the schoolwork, now that they're in the building, they don't have um, the devices. So that could be if we found out from the superintendent, a particular school that really was dying over this, you know, really had a very, maybe we could ask for a specific school. <clears throat> At June, Nick very eloquently said we needed to elevate cornerstone programs. They're funded at the lowest levels and they're in the highest need communities uh, and, and members. So again, I don't quite know how to handle that. Um, so Taya, I think if you could give us a little guidance on this, um, maybe we could proceed a little better. I forget to unmute sometimes too. Um, I think every committee has handled this differently. Um, to be honest, I find that reviewing them on a video call together is actually not always the most effective. Um, and luckily, if we, I'm trying to move some of these one second. If we move some of these that actually aren't fully fleshed out to the bottom, because these don't even have an author claiming them yet, and these have not been articulated yet. So you may remember this from last year. Uh, every community board has the same limit. It's uh, 40. I always get this mixed up. I think it's 40 capital requests and 20 budget requests. We have a maximum. So the reason that the board, you remember last, last fall, the board took that survey to vote, I think it was like 125 requests down to the 40 that we needed. Um, this year, I think because it's the second year of doing this with sort of digital enhancements um, and more feedback, the committees have not been quite as uh, they, they haven't submitted quite as many and the fewer are, are seem to be more concentrated. That's good because we want each committee to be submitting. We have we have six active committees, right? So we only want each committee to be submitting maybe six to eight. No, certainly no more than 10. Otherwise, we have a problem of, of having to eliminate some. So right now you actually only have four that are fully written out left to right. They're all Betty's. Betty, I moved one of them to the Hess committee because it was clearly a Hess topic. You're welcome. Yeah, to yeah, that's editing, fine. I thought we could. On that tab. Yep. Yeah, no, I just thought that we could um, give an idea to another committee. Yep. I didn't mean to take over that for you. So you have you have four that are fully filled in right now and then an additional two, it looks like, at least. So that'll bring you to six requests and then some additional brainstorms down here. Even if you added no more ideas to this spreadsheet, you'd be in a very good position. Um, I think a healthy activity to do together that doesn't take too much time, Betty, if you'd like, is just to read this like a story from left to right out loud. Would you like to do that? I hope that some of, I mean, I, I wrote this. I don't want to take ownership. I'm trying to, you know, listen to people. So maybe, uh, 
different people on the committee could take one and and sure take would, it through. Would Sam or Nick like to do the exercise of working your idea from left to right? So we want to make these so robust and so compelling. Uh, no, no problem doing that. The that full sounds... board totally puts their weight behind it and says, yes, this no, is no, one of the good, worthy, uh, worthy, worthy, uh, worthy tasks. So absolutely. OK, sounds like Nick's volunteering. <laughs> I'm going to take, so Nick, what I guess, is I guess, I'm sorry. I am not going to let Nick be by himself. And my name is on there. So yes, I will also <laughs> okay. get myself together with, with working expert. it from left to right. Cornerstone expert, Samantha. So yes. To, right? <laughs> Don't forget that. Just, just to put a little fire under you, um, the, this is due to the Office of Management and Budget at the end of October, I think it's right around, it's always the week of Halloween. So gotcha. this is the last chance to do this exercise. Yeah. Some committees have chosen to do it together in during their committee time. Um, Ms. Sure. Fivebush, I leave it up to you how you want to do this. <laughs> well, I have a question related to the budget topic that came up because I think the feedback I'm hearing and I, I did put it in the minutes was about a recommendation just to being as specific as we can, where we have data, include the data, and if we can have a budget ask that's really quantifiable as well, it's a good idea, right? So my question is, so when I think about the cornerstones and you know the, that they're underfunded comparatively to their, their peers like Compass and Sonic and Beacon, for example, um, you know, the, to me, the obvious logic of money is, you know, let's look at the cost per pupil because they do a cost per pupil model um, often and, go with, you know, whichever one, if Sonic or Compass is higher, you know, that we would say it should be maybe the same, right? Like it should be elevated up to there. My, I guess one of my question is, are we thinking of this as like X, however many cornerstones might be in our district and saying, okay, if we have two or we have three that we're looking of how much money does it close the gap from a cornerstone to a compass, like, but just the two or three in our district or citywide in the map? <laughs> One I of think the it's just our district, right? It, it must be hyper-specific to our geography. However- and would that work? Would, would they then say, CB2, we're gonna let your cornerstones <laughs> have more money. <laughs> it would not. That is, right, right. that is a great question. So the two, <laughs> The two most common reasons that requests, and not just from our community board, from all community boards, the two most common reasons that re requests get rejected is one, they're too vague, and two, they are citywide. We, this board is not citywide. This board is the nine neighborhoods surrounding Fort Greene Park. <laughs> So that's, that's a very good point. point. Mine but is it's... probably off the table as written. I, I think Sam's might be aligned in some ways, you know, because there's the program there in Farragut and that's the community center. But in my limited thinking right now, mine was definitely really a citywide issue um, that would probably be knocked off of this. But that does not mean that you cannot advocate for a specific location. <laughs> But I think Where are our cornerstones? One is in that Atlantic building that we visited. So there's Atlantic ago. Terminal, there's Ingersoll, mm -hmm. and then there's the Farragut one that I can think of. I don't know if there's another cornerstone around. I don't. I think those are the three that are immediately in our mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Now, what I was going to say to Nick's statement. Um, we can look at the commonalities of what the issues are, which I'm sure are really citywide for all cornerstones is either like underfunded or there's some repairs that NYCHA just has been completely negligent and just not doing across the board and kind of generalize them for the specifics of these three or however many more, if there are more um, around us, if you're thinking about that next. So maybe thinking about just several needs that we know exist in multiple They places. are common for like, we know that like NYCHA is negligent in repairs. That's mm -hmm. kind of like just in NYCHA in general, right? So that's a consistent thread. We also understand that there's a lack of um, exchanging of support with 
you know, city agencies and making sure that those funding sources are actually streamlined to ensure that if there is an outdoor event, that there's community partners to build. Like, how do, I don't know how to really like frame it, but there's consistency. So I don't think that there is anything that if we wanted to just narrow it down that uh, no other community center would not experience as well and make that a standard to uplift the Cornerstone projects. I mean, facility stands out to me as just an obvious sort of like mm -hmm. basic need, right? Like folks should have a fully functioning, working, safe facility or else these programs just struggle from the foundation. Um, that seems to be maybe the easiest lift. And it's certainly, I think it does tick the box, Sam, where pro I, I, you know, I can think of every one of my cornerstones, there's a laundry list of, you know, things that they needed fixed from NYCHA. So sounds like that might be a way we can help a cornerstone, but do it in a way within our district needs statement. What do you all think? Yeah, I mean, can we maybe just focus on one? Uh, the Farragut one, we seem to know that the facility is really in bad shape. And maybe we could work that idea through. And then I think we could probably Google, I mean, I, I, I think Google is like the answer to everything. I apologize, but right, I really do. I mean, I can't even tell how many times I said it this weekend. Ask Google, ask Google. Uh, but like these, these costs are probably on Google somewhere. Like we could probably just be like, you know, NYCHA gym repair, you know, and there's some public number of some absolutely ridiculous amount of money that some contractor got, pardon for my editorializing. Um, right, but that's a great, use, that's a great right? hack. It, it is, it's totally compelling to establish precedent by um, just, what's the word I'm looking for, Nick? Um, referencing, <laughs> referencing, <laughs> X oh. similar project in X year cost this much money because we don't we I don't I don't think the agencies expect us to have the expertise to know what to put a, a price tag on it but certainly they would expect us to have done the research to know okay a similar project was done of, of a similar scale just a couple of years ago and we know that it cost X amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to even compare it to how some of the local developments, um, housing developments are being made, like, you know, apartments, and they're having, you know, we've agreed on in many community board meetings and approved where community center spaces are supposed to be, you know, high tech and all of that, like, how is those projects being able to still be um, funded, obviously because of developers, but those type of standards should also be the equivalent with those developers being able to do those type of projects as well. Like there should be no reason why a high rise development should have a better accessible gym um, than young people who get millions of dollars in, in city funding and they can't even get a leak out of their roof. Like that should be some of a compelling argument as well. So should we be looking at some of the affordable housing that has gone up that has included gym space and cooking space and other types of community um, services or is that too far afield from this? I mean, if we're literally talking about a new gym floor, I would try and be as specific in the search as possible. Um, I think it is a common expense and I, you know, I, I can think of several gyms that have, you know, in the last few years had to have mm -hmm. this done. Um, I'm happy to try and Google that at some, you know, uh, okay. between now and some date in the near future. <laughs> actually, Ms. Ms. Feibusch, uh, uh, Parks and Rec actually got to a very similar point in their committee discussion earlier this week, and it was helpful to note that uh, the statement of needs will likely be discussed. Here are some milestones. <laughs> the September general meeting is next Wednesday. May or may not be discussed then because most of the committees aren't ready to discuss it. The October general meeting is oddly, because the September one was rescheduled, the, the October general meeting is Wednesday, October 13th. That is likely the last 
that's the last full board meeting before it's due to OMB. So I imagine that Chair Singletary will want some sort of a final product before October 13th. So if it helps, Parks and Rec gave themselves an assignment. Last call, if you want to participate in this process this year, it is optional, but it is also one of the most powerful and, and productive things that community boards can do every year. Um, Parks has decided to finalize all of their entries on their tabs over the weekend by Monday. So if that's helpful to you, um, I, I would go with that. Well, aren't they overachievers? Hey, I thank you for that. Feedback. You've had access to this spreadsheet <laughs> since May. <laughs> I appreciate that and, too. <laughs> and actually, actually, if you're feeling nervous about it, just don't look at ED and E's tab at all. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think last year they had 30, pretty close this year. I'm I not looking at it. I will stay away. <laughs> um, okay, so then I will set for myself um, an action commitment to, <laughs> I'm going to complete the minutes at the same time. Uh, I'm going to go for Monday. I guess there's no time like the present to get it done. So just looking up if I can find some calls related to gym repair um, in the in the city. Okay. Nice facilities and schools. So that, I think either of those maybe might be price points to reference, like school gym rehab or NYCHA gym rehab. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's say the school gym, the night, whichever you can find. But doesn't that building need more than just a gym floor or we're we just gonna go for the gym floor? Or can we put in a few more things? There could be some strategy to itemizing them because if you cluster them, it's easier for them to say no based on one thing, right? Whereas if you itemize them, maybe they'll say no to all but one. <laughs> I haven't been there in a bunch of years. I, I was there years ago, but has anyone been there and can just write some of the points? Because Fitzroy said that the sidewalk was uneven and the steps and you know, the paint was killing, but you know, that was a few years ago. So I don't know what the state is now. It could be worse, of course, if nothing was done. Is anyone able to go there and just kind of see? I'm sorry, where are we going again? At what location? The, the the Farragut House. Um, oh, I can. I can um, call up the. Oh, I can call up the director of the team there and ask to do a tour. Beautiful. Yeah. So then maybe if, if you there want are a few bullet items like would we I'm not sorry, just the floor, it. the painting, or if the plumbing, if the toilets don't work, just a few facility things, because as, as Taya said, maybe they would see specifics for specific projects. And instead of just saying no to them all, maybe they would fund one or two. Okay. And would you want me to also try to schedule for the other cornerstone as well and make a comparison or you just really want to focus on Farragut? I'm happy to do either or. Um, of course, one is a lot less than the other, but just want to throw that out there as well. I mean, I think if you are willing, that's a lot, Sam, but if you are willing and we did see an overlap, that might be compelling. And, okay. and I do I'd rather agree. be a compelling argument yeah. because we're looking at two cornerstones that are literally side by side. One is a little bit more renovated than the other, but has the same type of experiences with lack of attention in repairs. Mm -hmm. So Farragut, and which is the other, Atlantic or Ingersoll? Well, shoot, now that you think about it, Atlantic's worse off than Ingersoll, actually. Atlantic, I'll do Atlantic. I'll talk to the TA president. Lord, I got to I gotta talk to the TA president um, and get the, her on board to do a tour, and then also Farragut. I think Ingersoll is pretty stable, but I can also reach out to them 
because I have a relationship on of all fronts. So, but those are the two major ones that have extreme repair and has gotten some type of renovations and still um, are closed out to the public in certain instances because of the, the damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I think that'll be um, excellent. I know that there's a time element. When do you approximately think you'll, you'll be able to add this to the spreadsheet, the Google sheet? We lost her. Okay, but no, I'm we'll sorry. Go. I'm in and out. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question again, Betty? Yeah. When when do you think you'll be able to add this information to the Google Sheet? So I can do I can schedule a walkthrough probably on next week. Um I will reach out to the um Atlantic Terminal TA president um tomorrow. Um, and then I can coordinate with the, the site directors there and see what their schedule is like, the full programming. If we can do it in the morning, because I don't want to interrupt their after school programming services. Thank you. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. Um, just, just a quick reminder, Betty, of where we are in the overall timeline. Mm -hmm. um, so we look, kick this off in May, um, but it's, it's really the October dates that you're going to want to look at. The most. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, NYCHA was part of the agency consultations on the first day on September 9th, but there is the the last of the three agency consultations is on the 30th. And if you give me one second, I'll tell you which agencies that is. I, I want to attend the school construction authority is uh, that the third one and I'm not quite sure how to access it. We'll talk about that another time, but uh, school construction and from my interest, the DSNY on uh, September 30th. Um, it's, you should have received a calendar invite for it. There's also oh, 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 well, okay. extensive email. Um, and I, I'm, my outlook is being a little funky right now, but the committee drafts okay. have to be finalized by the 31st because I am expecting that at the October board meeting, they're going to put in a request for either a public hearing or the, a date for the board voting and prioritization across all of the committees. So we are really, the, the, the time is now. Okay, got it. So I will try to get more information on the items I drafted and try to fill them in a little better. Um, was there anything else people wanted to add? Okay, um, so hearing none, is there anything else about this statement of district needs that anyone wants to add? Okay, so hearing none, um, was there anything in the cultural arena? I mean, we really didn't um, touch that. No, okay. So I'd like to move on to the chair report, if I may. Uh, so what did I have? Um, one is you might have gotten a notice, but in the uh, executive committee, I believe the there is a proposal to change the dates of some of the committee meetings. We had touched on this, I think, in June, and our committee would the date would be the second. Thursday. And the rationale was so that there are no Monday meetings uh, because of the holidays and that the general meeting would be at the end of the month after all the committees have met and so on. So um, is there anyone here for whom the second Thursday would be a terrible um, situation? So we see the current schedule and the new schedule. Um, and that will be discussed at executive. If anyone has a comment, if you want to let me know, uh, I'll be sure to share it. Okay, and then the other 
well, two more items. I need, we, our committee needs a secretary. Nick has done this in June and then he agreed to do it today. Uh, so I'd love a permanent secretary if anyone can volunteer. If not, I'm gonna have to, uh, I, I will ask individuals to take the role of secretary uh, each month on a rotating basis. So you can let me know and then I'll let you know before the next meeting so that people, you know, whoever would be the next one uh, would know to be at the meeting uh, on time to take the notes. Is there anything else to add about that? Secretary, and then I want to, oh, Nick, Nick says yes, <laughs> thumbs up. No, I, okay. I, and Taya, Taya is writing comments for me in, in, the, in the chat. I love it, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to be more up to date what's happening in District 13. So I attended by Zoom the District 13 CEC meeting. Um, they didn't get to the primary reason I went, which was the uh, district planning report. District planning, we, we've gone over that in other years with a, sometime in district 13 or 15. And they talk about the capacity, the utilization, overutilization, underutilization. They talk about like the populations. If, for example, more and more kids are gonna be middle school, if there are fewer, younger children in the elementary, you know, just to look at the trends, the demographics and so on. So I was so excited and they, they didn't get to it. So I'm reaching out for that report, but uh, we'll see. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about uh, COVID, the new quarantine, uh, the rules that they're not quarantining, uh, how they're dealing with all well, the children have to line up for health checks to get into the buildings. Um, apparently a rule is that parents and other individuals can't go into the uh, building unless they have a the, the vaccine like on the Excelsior, the same way as in the restaurants, I, I believe. Uh, and then some people in the meeting reported that that wasn't happening. And apparently the school safety agents are the ones that have to um, implement this uh, rule. Uh, concerns were expressed about ACS letters. Now, on one hand, it's a responsibility of the school to make sure that all the children that are registered come to school, that there's outreach, that they know that the children are okay. We know that some parents don't want their children um, in physical school. And they've been, in, you know, parents said that they would do the hybrid, they would do the at home and so on. But if, and the, the city is not offering that this year so far. However, there was quite a discussion that the ACS uh, letters saying, you know, that an investigator could come to your home to report you for uh, educational neglect. That's what it, um, it is according to the attendance rules. And also for the safety of children that it, they can't find certain children and don't know what happened to them. You know, it, it, it behooves the city that they do have to follow up and make sure every child is accounted for. So um, you might be hearing um, more about that challenge. Um, let's see what else I have here. The superintendent very briefly mentioned an effort and I hope we hear more about it to have the international baccalaureate curriculum. I believe that's a middle and high school curriculum. So it would probably start in the middle schools. And that's a, a much more rigorous curriculum uh, than we have now, as well as the fact that it's accepted and it's understood throughout. So if a child moves to another country or another state or another place, that, that there's some uh, alignment in what the uh, children have learned. So, so what's happening, Betty, is that being adopted? I'm unclear. Uh, what, what the uh, I'm unclear also, but the superintendent <laughs> okay. mentioned that something about the International Baccalaureate, that that's one of his uh, 
efforts. So I believe it's probably being discussed and worked on. It is not yet implemented because I think, I, I know from other schools, it takes a while for them to develop that curriculum or train the teachers, get the materials. Um, that's my understanding. Um, let's see what else. There's a lot of concern about the September 27th deadline for school personnel to have the first dose for teachers. And I believe other staff like the cafeteria workers, the bus drivers, the safety agents and so on. And as of the last data that the superintendent had, some schools had as high as 80% and some as low as 40%. That's a huge um, span. Uh, so there is a lot of concern as to how the schools will handle this if teachers and other staff uh, are not allowed to enter the building uh, because of a lack of um, the vaccine. On the other hand, that is encouraging more people to get the vaccine because people want to work and they want their salary. So uh, that's something I think that we're all interested in and we're going to be watching. And the superintendent did mention the new elementary school and the new middle school. I know our, our CB2 has advocated for many years. So it looks like a year from now, there'll be the new middle school in the Pacific Park. And I, I, I'm not quite sure when the new elementary school in City Point will come online, but then there will be discussions about zoning. Will those be zoned for specific neighborhoods, blocks, children, or will they be special programs or open to all to apply? So uh, we will hear more about that in the future. So that concludes my um, chair report. Uh, so now we're up to, oh, are there any questions on that? No questions, okay. No, just an update today, the court case was heard for the religious exemptions, right, for Department of Education and they have temporarily lost the DOE. So uh, the requirement for vaccinations remains uh, for now, but there will be mm -hmm. no religious exemptions uh, upon it. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, so the other um, committee business, does anyone have anything uh, under other uh, committee business? Seeing none. Okay, and community forum, but everyone I see on my screen is from the committee. So I don't see the uh, community forum. So before we adjourn, I just want to ask Madison Specifically, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, what did you think of this meeting? Was there anything you wondered about in, in terms of the way we do business or our discussion? Do you have any questions? I thought it was very like well organized and like I definitely caught on to a lot of things. Um, the like budget stuff, I'm still a little beyond, but. Um, so away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, overall, yeah, I, I definitely caught on. Um, and I really like the um, youth council idea, um, especially because after I attended like some of the like community general board meetings, I was still like very hesitant and like didn't think I was like qualified, um, especially since like it's a predominantly like adult, um, you know, uh, members and um, just seemed a little, you know, much um, for someone who's just still in school, you know. Um, so I think it's like a great way to increase civic engagement and also in a more comfortable environment, maybe for some people who think it's daunting. Great. So at any time, you know, feel free to email myself or Taya or, uh, you know, when we meet in person and we think it's going to be in January, but nobody's really sure uh, what will happen. But then there's a more in, informal, you know, like afterwards people can chat, ask questions. Uh, you'll find this group will be very supportive and uh, we're always happy to have a young person join us. Um, and, and I guess it's a little weird on Zoom because it's not as easy in, in that sense of just 
walking out of the a meeting room with you and you know chatting. So uh, I'm really glad you joined. And uh, yeah. So my favorite motion or Santi. <laughs> Santia made a motion to adjourn. Okay. And and is there a second? I'll second. Who second? I, I oh Sam? Was that Sam? Yeah. Okay, great. So uh yeah, Terry made a comment that you're Madison, you're probably on more Zooms than we are, but you're back in school, right? So in the building. So are you still on Zooms when that is the hours a day, like just on Zooms? But yeah, now we're back in school. Some meetings though are still like um like stuff are on Zoom. But yeah. Okay. So everyone stay well. We'll see you on the next Zoom. Feel free to reach out if you have questions, concerns, and uh, have a good evening, everyone.